Oh, mm. sorry, I'll wait. Oh, okay. We're good. <laughs> okay. Skeleton on, stuck to my bones Never left such a mark on my heart But I keep coming back for more Cause we are the ones who won when trouble comes With a gun I loved you once and was shown Then everyone made fun But you know I always make you oh, oh. So where do you go now To hide all your hopes Give you love which just was hollow And I'm laid down like Sun, but I sleep in my sorrows Like me with my chin and say I'll be fine, I'll be fine
I'm sorry, I'm supposed to clap at the beginning. Yeah, whatever. I don't know, there's like a sound thing, like if you don't have a clipboard, so if you just keep clapping, it'll it'll work out fine. Anyway, thanks for coming. I believe this is our seventh show. Awesome. Or our sixth show, something like that. I'm not really (laughs) sure, but we'll we'll, we'll hash it out later. Um, I just did that right right in front of the camera. (laughs) It's all over me. I always think that myself to Hey, guys. As well, down. I guess I'll start with that. You're the first band to spill in the studio. Yeah. You've been spilling at the beginning. You're that spilling now. That was my second spill of the day. Mm-hmm. Built the spill. Sorry. Sorry, guys. Yeah, you got it. it. Uh, yeah. So, anyway, thanks for coming. Yeah. So, you have an EP you released a little while ago. Yeah. Um, Hypnotize? Hypnotize, yeah. Mm-hmm. It was released in June um, at Alberta Street Pub. And that um, it went really well. It was, it was really great. And that was pre-Amy. Um so now mm. we're planning on making a new EP, incorporating our wonderful new um, family member of our band. Mm. So, yeah. So um, now you're post Amy. Now we're post Amy. Post- we're, Amy. we're like in the midst of Amy. In the middle of in Amy. The middle of Amy. Uh, yeah. yeah. Chasing Amy. Yeah. Yeah. Sure. But yeah, uh, we released it in June. Um, <laughs> sorry. Um, and uh, it was it was a very interesting process. We. Uh, originally started recording it in my house um with my producer friend riley smith um who came up from la um and we just kind of just sat in my living room recording stuff and then it was like a back and forth kind of thing we were working with another um engineer um adam green um Mm -hmm. adam green halley and um it's been really great so yeah that was kind of what it did Blah, 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 no, blah, great blah. answer. Yep. I like what it evolved into. Yeah. I guess the real question is, have you ever been hypnotized? Yeah, I have. Have you really been hypnotized? I have been hypnotized oh, yeah. before. What was it like? Um, well, I don't remember it because, like, uh, I was hypnotized, but I, I remember, like, <laughs> moments of it <laughs> um, where... Kind of, like, uh, snap my fingers and you'll start yeah, crazy shit? Well, not now because right. I'm not hypnotized right. anymore. But, Pickle. Um, <laughs> <laughs> oh, a different guy. Sorry. Yeah, yeah. yeah. But um yeah, it was it was interesting. I remember doing the like the Macarena and then also being like smacking people in the face. I, it was a very interesting hypnotism. <laughs> okay, so you got a new EP coming okay. out. About seven cents. Um Did you mention it at all? Oh no, it's that's something completely different. That's an <clears throat> album I like that we're writing. But um so oh. uh, So you have an EP and then an album. There's a lot of things happening. Um, okay. We're like, uh, well, one thing I, I, I write a lot of music. I write a new song every day. Um, I try to. Um, and uh, so that's <laughs> what. <laughs> you keep me on my toes. It's, uh, <laughs> yeah, I'll just get phone calls and messages like, oh my God, check out this new song. I'm like, oh, cool. Another thing to learn. <laughs> <laughs> last last July, you did that. Um, I, the 30 day songwriting yeah. challenge. I wrote one song a day for 30 days. Um, mm-hmm. I'm going to do it again. Um the new year but instead of 30 days i'm going to do 100 days mm. um a little bit more planning for this and a little bit more prep because uh it, it's very it's uh, it's hard <laughs> and um but i it's it was a really good exercise and also it really keeps you on your toes like thinking of different things especially subject matter and things theme things themes and ideas um and also just like different melodies different ways of songwriting so i guess then you have like a large uh, a large library of songs from which to choose and therefore do you like lot them into albums and eps and yeah well, like we we're trying to figure out exactly what our sound is right now now that we're incorporating amy and um which is the best thing ever like we, we we're just we all really click so well together right now which is is the best thing ever but we want to make sure that we showcase and we experiment with different sounds and um mm. one thing that hypnotize was really cool it it we were al- allowed to be really creative um in the production side of it um 
but it it also kind of limited our live performances like it, there's a different sound on the EP than what we actually play in person um, which is a little bit more Americana. It's an acoustic version of what the EP actually was, mm -hmm. but it was still an amazing experience. But um, yeah, the, the, the new EP that we want to do, um, it's going to be more Americana. It's going to be, um, I want to call it like experimental folk pop, but I don't know if that's exactly what that would sound like. <laughs> what would you call it? I don't know. <laughs> what would I call it? Yeah. I, don't know. Yeah. I don't know how to people are like oh what's your band like and i'm like i don't know let's it's it's i'd 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 ca i call you a singer songwriter i describe you as such and um i think i think we're kind of bluesy sometimes yeah yeah mm -hmm. definitely. your voice fits that sort of sultry, sultry. bluesy yeah type I, of music i think one thing that our band's trying to figure out is like our genre our subgenre, and once we figure that out then we're gonna like that's how we're gonna put ourselves out there um mm -hmm. Right now, we, we are currently in this, this phase of, of, well, it's been a little bit tricky the past couple of months because everybody's been really busy. We all have, like, really intense projects that are happening right now, but um, the new year is going to be going off with a bang. Um, so we're actually looking at different studios to record our EP in right now. Um, well, where going, do you like to play? Um, where do we like to play? Yeah, um, you know, all those places. Oh, all those just all of them. Just all of them. Yeah, just all of them. Not a favorite. Just put them in a blender. Take it <laughs> out. Street Car Albert is awesome. Is, Albert Street, Street Pub is really... Uh, it has um, a fantastic sound system. Really nice. I love Albert Street Pub. Fantastic waiting staff. Like, everybody's so nice. And it's just a really welcoming um, venue. Mm -hmm. um, so we're excited to play there again in January. Um, you said Street Car. Street Car, oh, that was such a fantastic venue. Um, but it closed down. So it we, oh. we're... We're so sad that we can't play there anymore. But um, that was one of our favorites. Um, and Amy, well, we wish you got to play there too. Sante's nice. Nice and Sante. intimate. Sante is really, really wonderful. It has a fantastic staff and it's a very great venue. Um, it's a very intimate venue. It's like a longer mm -hmm. kind of venue, like <laughs> <laughs> um, size wise. But um, that was a really great venue. We loved playing there. Um, and yeah, we're we're still trying to look up different places to play out right now. But mm -hmm. yeah, okay. I've got a lot of favorites. Do you think the idea of like trying to pigeon yourself or pigeonhole yourself into a genre or subgenre is <coughs> kind of limiting, as opposed to like being able to do what you want to do, or does it make it easier to market yourself? Well, that's the one thing that we're f trying to figure out right now. Like, um, I've been doing a lot of research. Um, me and my friend Rob Larkin were actually talking about this. Like, it's if you figure out your subgenre, if you figure out your genre, not only can you market yourself online better but you can find your audience easier your your audience can find you easier and um that's one way to really get yourself out there um especially uh, like when i'm analyzing my own songwriting i listen to so many different genres of music i love so many different genres of music i can't really pigeonhole myself into one specific genre that's why i say we're experimental folk pop because i'm don't i don't know what we are it's yet. an interesting conundrum uh, kind of in the modern music scene, I feel like tr you have to, on one level, you have to label yourself so that you can, f you know, market and find audiences and be able to, to describe yourself easily without having to sit down for half an hour. Mm -hmm. um, but at the same time, I feel like there shouldn't be really limits on what people can do based on, you know, instrumentation or, or anything. I mean... I, if you look at, at a band like the Beatles or something, even like Who? I, you may have heard of them. I don't know. Yeah. Um, they are pretty. Oh, Papa Roach. Yeah. Yes. Papa Roach. <laughs> well, but but Such bands Kobe. <laughs> bands bands are different from album to album, and they evolve over time. Mm -hmm. And it's not just the freaking Beatles or whatever. Um, I'm a metalhead. I love Opeth right now. They were hardcore death metal. Mm -hmm. you know, really screaming vocals and everything back in the 90s, and they've just made a complete shift to clean vocals, very complex arrangements, strings involved, totally different sound mm -hmm. than what they had even, like, eight, nine years ago, mm -hmm. and yet they're still Opeth, and I feel like there shouldn't be limits based on, I don't know. Well, I guess eventually you want the label to become your own name. Yeah, so, like, exactly. The label becomes the band instead of the genre that you're in. Like, yes. People know Opeth because you know Opeth, and they know the wide variety of sounds they have, and right now you're just trying to figure out how to reach an audience, yes. essentially. Yeah. So how'd you guys meet Amy? Oh. Now uh, that you're living in a post-Amy world. That's a weird one. 
we met Amy first. Um, we had a gig together. It was for the theater fundraiser. Well, um, I've known John for a while. Well, you guys know each other for a long time. I, through, through theater, actually. Mm-hmm. Through the Portland se- theater scene. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. That's um, where we met. Then. We met through... We were in a play together. No doubt. Yeah. We, like, I remember distinctly we were casted as, like, clowns in um, a 12th... No. And what musicians. The, in Winter's Tale. There Winter's we go. Tale, yeah. We were musicians and clowns Hi, in a play. Hi, hmm. Hi, Caitlin. We miss you, Caitlin. Um... But uh, we met, well, I met Amy originally when we were playing at a fundraiser. Um, she was playing the nickel harpa before, and me and John were, like, John told me, he's like, I know Amy, she's fantastic. I'm like, what is she playing? And we were both kind of fangirling while we were watching her. It's like, we could, we should play with her. We should steal her. Let's steal her. Um, and then we played a set. But that was, like, the first moment we, we well, I, that I met Amy. And then. Are you looking to rope more people in? We're looking for a drummer right now. Mm. Um, we're on the on the prowl for a drummer, and um, we have some ideas, um, but we're not going to make anything public yet. We're still looking, and we're making sure they're a good fit and that like they they jive with us. I think the hardest part is finding somebody who is as socially awkward and <laughs> completely like nerd dorky as we all Ooh, are. I'm not dorky. You're you're okay. <laughs> um, <laughs> she's pretty dork. She's kind of. I think she's leading the league right now. She might even out dork you, dude. I'm kind of a silent dork. Okay. I don't. Know. Yeah, you are more vocal with your. No. It's fine. Poor, I, mean, <laughs> I am a nerd. We kind of like are all nerds with different things that we nerd out with. What do you guys nerd out about? What's your favorite thing, Amy? To nerd out about? Oh Jesus! You have um, a lot of things. So I love Scandinavian folk music. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, I don't know. I get really passionate about different <laughs> things. Are you signing? No, at me? no, no, I was no, no, no. Tremendous I, eye roll. I get passionate about things and I make snap decisions. I bought a nickel harpa and then decided to move to Sweden to study it. So I would say that's the most nerdy thing about me. That's what there's, a nickel harper looks like. <laughs> there's not very many of us in the world. It's, it's an um, insane instrument. It's so beautiful. And I have a dark little pit of, of metal um, that I that I go into. Uh, I feel like not a lot of people are... I mean, it's a small community, um, so it's, it's always fun to meet someone. I like the fact that metal's like a great platform for just exploring ridiculous ideas. It's so like ridiculous. Metal. That's what I love about yeah. it. People are, are just they're just crazy and then they're just normal people. They're just nerds. I'm wanting to see more bands with like animal singers like Hate Beak and Caninus like stuff yes. like that. Just something that's ridiculous like yeah why not? Why not just have like a dog singer in your band? Could be good. Yeah. <laughs> could be fun. If could you could animorph into any animal what'd you go with? What? If you could animorph like into any animal what fox. would you go with? You'd go with the fox. Dolphin. Oh, Jesus. <laughs> Ooh, that's... But you'd have to animorph in the water. Like, what if you animorphed on dry land? I wouldn't. I'd go into the water. For, I mean, I'd think this thing through. This isn't like a knee-jerk... I mean, I don't know. What, if a, what if a fox animorphed underwater? I mean, you're screwed either way. A fox can swim. Not from, like, 20 feet deep, maybe. I don't... I don't know what I would animorph into. such a hostile into. interview. I would animorph into Buckethead. <laughs> That's my answer. I think I'd animorph into a couch. I don't know. I think it'd be really good. Like, if you wanted to commit a crime, you could just animorph into a couch, wait for somebody to pick you up, bring you in the house. You could unanimorph. You really something. thought this through. Yeah, yeah. I'm always thinking of ways to rob people. Uh-huh. <laughs> now, here's the real question. Okay. If there was a reverse animorph, like a dog was going to animorph into a person, would we treat the person like it had human agency? Would it have the brain capacity of a dog, or would it be like a full person? I I guess it would have the brain capacity of a dog. (laughs) So, or maybe it could just be like a person, but could only speak in like dog puns. Come on, let's not get political. (laughs) You promised. I never said anything. I think that'd be interesting. Interesting question, sir. Mm. I don't. I don't know the answer. That's true. It would be a pig. (laughs) Well, you know what? Thank you for coming. Yeah. Thank you for doing the interview, yeah. playing a few songs, letting us know about your future projects. You know, by the time this comes out, hopefully your future projects will be like right on the horizon, just a full Animorph theme EP. <laughs> yeah, thank you very much. Thanks. Thanks so thank much. You.
see Since when the tides but left to see She's there for me And her paper touches Every one of mother's loves that passes All in can say She isn't true When she's there for you She says Girl, let me give Would you let me give to you Would you hold me close Will you still Let me nurture you And her sweet charity Whilst my eyes were never blue Give, let me give Trouble, oh, oh, trouble. 
me with a mighty heart I couldn't ask for more When your love is in store Messed up on that, but let's just move forward. Next one! Almost there! Drops in the bow! I don't done. know how to keep it <laughs> First try, everybody! <laughs> First try! One, two, five, seven. Oh, sorry. Ah. sorry. 